Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial. Today's topic is photodynamic therapy. Basically, photodynamic therapy is a promising new treatment option for cancer patients. Photodynamic therapy involves the administration of a photosensitizer that is triggered by light of a certain wavelength and causes selective damage to the tumor and its surrounding vasculature. The major difficulty in administering photosensitizers having low water solubility, which limits the clinical use of photodynamic therapy. A potential strategy for overcoming this difficulty is to incorporation of photosensitizer in a nanostructure such as polymeric nanoparticles, solid lipid nanoparticles, nanostructured lipid carriers, gold nanoparticles, hydrogels, liposomes, liquid crystals, and dendrimers. In photodynamic therapy, three components work together, a photosensitizer, a light source, and oxygen. When the photosensitizer is excited by a specific wavelength of light, it can interact with its surroundings in one of two ways. These reactions are classified as type 1 and type 2. The photosensitizer in its excited triplet state reacts with biomolecules such as lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. In type 1 reactions, transferring hydrogen atoms via the radical mechanism, it produces free radicals and radical ions. The type of radical depends on the target molecule, such as lipids, proteins, or nucleic acids, which then react with oxygen to produce reactive oxygen species. The phenomena of triplet, triplet annihilation is used in type 2 reactions. The photosensitizer in its excited triplet state reacts with oxygen in its triplet ground state in these reactions. This produces highly reactive singlet oxygen. The reactivity of ROS and singlet oxygen is high, and their half-life is short. As a result, only biological substrates within a 20 nanometer radius of the region where these species are formed are directly affected by photodynamic therapy. Photosensitizers The photosensitizers are the major part in photodynamic therapy. Light with a wavelength in the therapeutic window, 600 to 700 nanometers, should be used to excite the photosensitizer since it has a greater capability for tissue penetration. It must not be toxic to cells in the dark. That is, it must not kill cells in the absence of light. Furthermore, the target cells must specifically capture and or keep it. Finally, it must be capable of inducing immunogenic cell death, which aids in the establishment of a specialized immune response to malignant tumors. Some of the conventional photosensitizer used in photodynamic therapy are methylene blue, chlorins and bacteria chlorins, curcumin and thalocyanines. Advantages and Disadvantages of Photodynamic Therapy Some of the advantages of conventional photodynamic therapy for cancer are short treatment time, little invasiveness, lower costs than other treatments, etc. But having certain disadvantages, such as photosensitivity after treatment, limitation to treat metastatic cancer with convention technology. Impact of Nanotechnology in Photodynamic Therapy Nanotechnology-based photosensitizer delivery is a novel approach to improving the outcome of cancer photodynamic therapy. Nanoparticles are particles with size range of 1 to 100 nanometers. They have a number of advantages as a photosensitizer delivery system, including protection of the photosensitizer from enzymatic degradation, control of photosensitizer release, allowing for a constant and uniform concentration into target cells, ability to penetrate target cells due to their submicron size, biocompatibility and resorbability via natural pathways, and photostability. Different nanoparticles are used as a carrier for photodynamic therapy such as polymeric nanoparticles, solid lipid nanoparticles, nanostructured lipid carriers, and metallic nanoparticles. Thank you for watching this video tutorial. If you like this tutorial, please share with your friends and colleagues. Thank you.